Hey, how's it going? I'm Isla Golden and welcome to my vlog. All right. Okay, so last week we talked about the decision to kill off characters. <laughs> And this week we are going to be talking about the the opposite of that and the decision to bring your characters into the story or thus. <laughs> um, actually, I kind of do want to talk about a little bit about um, the birth of some of my characters <laughs> um, because they have actually been kind of major plot points in particularly in the tail saga. <laughs> Because of course, because the tail saga has everything. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm just going to focus for a few minutes at least <laughs> on talking about the tail saga <laughs> because I think that's got some of my best examples of the decision to have my characters procreate and give birth to new characters. Um, so. <clears throat> Anybody who's read the Tale Saga, and I recommend you read the Tale Saga, there's always a link in the description below, it's free to read. Um, and the link is to the first story, and then you can find the rest from there, I hope. Uh, it's fairtake.net. Um, at least I'm hoping it's all still up there. <laughs> Haven't checked in a while. Um, anyway, so in the Tale Saga, um, within the first eight uh, books you do get the birth of a couple of important characters and then the eighth book you get some more. Um, these are characters that do become very important in, in the next generation stuff because that's more focused on all the kids anyway. Um, but yeah in, in the, the first eight books of the Tale Saga you do get um, two rather important characters being born and they're incredible baby characters by the way. <laughs> if you're going to have a baby character, make them super powerful and highly intelligent. Just, just helps. <laughs> um, but yeah, all the births, almost all the births. <laughs> there is one of them that you don't actually see. You don't actually see their birth. Uh, but the births that do kind of get focused on um, within those first eight books of the Tale Saga, they are very dramatic um, and the, the characters are sort of important, um, both in terms of their roles within the story, certainly the, the earlier two characters who are born, um, they're very important in, in terms of their role within the first eight books of the story. You know, a lot of the events that happen in the Tale Saga wouldn't happen if certainly if one of these two characters didn't exist. <laughs> and probably not if both of these characters didn't exist, uh, depending on how you sort of see the dark reality future stuff. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, the, there was a point of having... Um, I don't think I'd necessarily show the, the I don't think I ever show the exact moment of birth for anything about kind of see one of the moments of birth for one of them now and then in book eight now that I think about it. Um you don't get the exact moment of birth for this character, but you you know this character's being born and, and um when they get born you see, you see the, the direct sort of moments after it and that has an impact on the story in, in its own way. Um uh, because of, of various things and connections that happen because of, of that particular moment uh, in time and, and how things sort of felt from there and the, you know the, the child itself is so important <laughs> and I think that's the thing um certainly when I'm writing more of a fantasy story I'm not adding any new character just you know a, a, certainly a, an infant or a baby character just for the sake of, you know, life and death and birth and that kind of thing does happen, so you kind of need to have it there. Um, if I'm introducing a, a new child character in particular, then they, they have to have a reason for sort of being there and sort of existing, and if they don't, then they kind of just, you're aware that they are a thing, but they sort of 
fade into the background by by quite a lot and they don't they don't really have a major role but certainly in the tales library in those first eight books certainly that first little baby that i introduced such an impact on the story admittedly it's been because um the child itself is a remarkable child <laughs> so intelligent so powerful <laughs> literally could not solve some of the problems in no, those first eight books without that baby <laughs> probably a slight exaggeration but yeah um and as I said, the, the, the whole birth of the character, there is a lot that goes on around that. And yeah, that, that was a whole story within itself. The, the idea of, you know, is this character going to be born now or is it going to be delayed? Um, and, and various different things like that. And it's, yeah, it's, it's certainly one of those things when I went back through and, and edited it was um, I did sort of, tweak some of those circumstances a little bit um, to kind of give it a little bit more weight um, partly because as I, as I said this was a, a particularly important character for <laughs> the beginning for the first eight books in the Tales Saga even though I think you I think he's born in book four pretty sure I think he's born in book four and then uh, then you've got five six seven eight um there's this amazing little baby character um i actually think he's more interesting as a baby character than he is as, a, as an adult character or a teenage character um uh, teenage adult character <laughs> um just because i think he has so much more of an impact and is so much more impressive at that age whereas when he reaches his teens he, he does kind of become a little bit more angsty and arrogant and and you know whatever else but as as a baby character when he's sort of got all those qualities there still um it's more interesting exploring it when when they're a baby character um and, and you know and, and stuff like that um so yeah yeah I, I think certainly in in you know when, when i am sort of going okay i want these characters to have a child um for whatever reason or i want to introduce a new baby character or <laughs> i don't want to introduce a new baby character I'm, I'm going to sort of have these characters have a child um sometimes it's you know kind of a yeah but that that's not important they're just going to be sorted in the background and sometimes as with this particular character in, in the tale saga actually that that's a very important thing <laughs> this character needs to exist <laughs> um but it, again, in the same way that you don't kill off a character without knowing there are going to be consequences, you don't bring a character into existence without knowing there are going to be consequences and without sort of trying to pick through what those consequences are and, and how that's going to work and various different things like that. So, um, yeah, it's, it's an interesting decision to sort of make and... Um, taking a moment to sort of step aside and from the tail saga <laughs> step aside from the tail saga and talk about the the current project that i'm writing um i'm not giving any of the key players a, a child <laughs> that, would, that would be a bit weird <laughs> it wouldn't fit in with the whole um because obviously you know you kind of have an idea of a lot of the things these characters go through because of the hyena boy stuff and obviously they don't have any children in the hyena boy stuff um, but I did sort of make a decision to give one of the characters related to the main character in the current project that I'm writing. Um, well, they are going to have a child at some point. Um, and I already kind of, could, again, this, this isn't a child that's going to feature, but it's sort of going to pepper some of the, some of the, the family stuff that kind of goes on. Um, within my, my current project so again it's a birth that is kind of significant and important um and and likewise there there is a child born within the hyena boy narrative later on in the hyena boy narrative that again isn't there for absolutely no reason it, it does you know progress things and 
change things and change the dynamic of things in a particular way because that's what needs to happen and that's also going to have to reflect now in my current projects <laughs> because you know it, it's sort of one of those events that it's it's going to be felt um and it's going to be felt more I think in the current project because the current project slows things down a little bit more um but at the same time it's not going to have the same kind of impact um because you're not getting the first hand point of view of it um as you do in the hyena boy um but again you know when i was sort of making that decision when i was writing hyena boy i mean it was one of those things i kind of i kind of knew uh was going to be an eventual plot point but it wasn't you know it, again i kind of had to think about the impact and, and why this had to happen and various things like that sort of going into it so that it all sort of made sense and, and rolled together and, and whatever else um which it does <laughs> but it, it's all about I think like I said if you're killing off a character you've got to think about why you're killing off that character and, and what importance that has to to the story and to the plot and to what's going on and the character around it and likewise if you're going to have a character be born, whether they are a an, an important character, as in Tail Saga, or whether they're just something that's going to have an impact on the story, but not a direct impact on the story, they're just going to be sort of something that f flavours the background of the story, um, they still need to sort of have a reason to, to be there, um, even if it's not necessarily the most obvious reason in the world. Um, it's, they still, it still needs to be relevant. It still needs to, you know, happen for a reason. Yeah, and life and death need to happen for a reason when you are a writer. <laughs> for the characters in your story, life and death need to happen for a reason. Um, even though you know, real life sometimes there are no, there is no reason, there is no meaning. It's just something that happens. Um, you do sometimes, you know, you have to accept that in real life. Sometimes things just happen. Uh, but in a story where you have more control, things have to happen for a reason. <laughs> um, and life and death is, is one of those things. You know, birth is one of those things. Um, and the characters that you, you introduce, you know, okay, sometimes they're just going to have like a fleeting influence and sometimes they're going to leave more of a lasting impact, which kind of reflects how life is. But there's always sort of a reason. Um, even if it's not a big reason, there's always sort of a reason. Um, yeah. Okay, I, I think I've done this some justice. <laughs> um, I think I did better talking about death than I did sort of talking about birth. Um, I didn't expect that. Um, but again, I think I'm, it's trying to avoid being too spoilery. Um, it's not always the easiest thing to do. Uh, so, okay, next time I'm going to be revisiting the multiverse. Um, basically, this is definitely one of the videos I did very, very early on. Um, I just want to sort of go back to it and sort of give a kind of explanation to any newcomers or anybody who doesn't want to go back and watch the long, quiet video, as I'm pretty sure it was. Um, just a guide as to what the multiverse is and what I'm talking about when I'm talking about the multiverse. I mean, I know I can sort of probably do that really short, uh, in a really short space of time, but yeah, let's 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 go. If we're going to sort of do these occasional revisits, let's just go in and, and do it. And the multiverse seems like one that should be revisited and clarified, as I said, for newcomers or for people who haven't necessarily seen the big long video. Don't know how long it was, but a lot of those early ones were ridiculously long and very quiet. <laughs> so anybody who has seen it, it'll just be like a little refresher, and anybody who has an it, just you know your introduction to the multiverse, um, or a proper introduction to the multiverse, in, you know, depending on how much of this babbling that you actually follow. <laughs> All right. Okay, so I hope you guys have found this one sort of interesting. I hope you're sort of looking forward to the next one, and I will see you next time. See ya. <laughs> if you've enjoyed this video, feel free to check out some of my others, and if you like what you see, please like and subscribe. See ya.